What's up, y'all? This is Henny. Another Friday. Here to hang out with y'all for a few minutes. Run it! <laughs> Yo, so this week I had the pleasure of collaborating with my brother Needles. It was a fun time at a studio over there in Midtown Atlanta. And uh, you know I had to sit down and get some words of advice, words of inspiration from a brother who's been in the game longer than I have, great successes, as well as having to deal with the hills and the valleys of this industry. So I'm going to get straight into it. Let's have a good one. Roll it! <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Henny, and I'm back with another hangout with my good friend Needles. Y'all should know he's got plaques all around the wall, just like most of the friends I'm messing with around here, man. These guys been in the game a long time, man, and it's a privilege to finally get in here, vibe with them. You know, we've, we've known each other for years off and on, but to have fun in the studio yeah. and just have some organic chemistry, man, this is some good stuff, man. So yeah. thanks for having me, bro. Appreciate it, man. Uh, you know, tell people uh, where you're from and yeah. come up some of the things that, you know, you've done. Absolutely. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm Needles. I was originally from Lansing, Michigan. Um, started out, my pops was like an avid jazz and blues head so it was always jazz in the house blues yeah, in the house yeah, yeah. it's just always around so um i didn't really catch the bug for like producing until i saw this movie juice yeah yeah i saw juice yeah and i wanted to be cute so bad man i just yo he was like <laughs> the, he was like that guy yeah know? and um and then oh, man, i just wanted to be in music i started djing in high school sold mixtapes and stuff like that Where um you know from there i, I went to florida a and m yeah DJ there and but then you know back then it was like we're carrying big crates, crates yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, all yeah, the crates yeah. and, and, and all that stuff and I was like I love music but I don't know if I can do this long term I don't know if I can like make a living off the off of it so I figured let me go to some kind of school that can kind of help me kind of uh, at least point me in the right direction and for me that was going to NYU I got into NYU's grad yeah. school yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. the time they were only they were one of the only music business school there was only a few at the time right. now there's like right no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hell yeah so more importantly for that for for me it was like it was in new york okay and um one thing led to another i ended up interning for 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 diddy and yeah Red bad boy and around that time around the same time maybe within that year i started producing just on the side just as a hobby yep and kind of got good and they uh they heard my stuff, like you know, when you're interning at you know at a at a, at a, at a label, everybody knows you got a side hustle. Hell yeah! So they found out that uh, I, I produced and asked for some music. I sent it in, and really the rest is history. They sent it off, sent it to this manager, and the manager really took it, took me to the next level. So that's that's the gist. That's that, how I started. Okay, okay. You know I mean? Now tell them a little bit uh, some of the jams you know yeah. you created over the, the you know yeah. So um, I kind of I kind of started out with the whole G Unit wave. So I did a lot of early, uh, like, 50. I did, like, uh, Piggy Bank. Yeah. And I did, um, what else? God Gave Me Style on the album. Then I did uh, Young Buck's first single, Let Me In. Yeah. Another joint called Bang Fire. Bang. Fire. Um, did a joint on Game's album, uh, Game's first album, uh, called Special with Nate Dogg. Uh, and then, and that was, like, the New York days. I, you know, I did more stuff for, like, Jada Kiss and, mm -hmm. and Lupe. And then... Ended up coming to Atlanta, and my first big record moving to Atlanta was um, I'm Going In yeah. by um, yeah. Drake, Wayne, and Jeezy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of, it was a struggle at first moving down here, um, but then I caught that record, and then uh, shortly after I caught probably my biggest record was uh, Bruno Mars, Just The Way You Are. But the yeah. way that record happened was it was actually for Lupe Fiasco. Okay. Did the track. Did a hook, just a random hook. Yeah. And um, my boy shot my boy Cassius that did the hook. Word. And uh, sent it in the Atlantic, you know what I mean? And they were like, oh, you know, this is cool. We want to put this new artist on there named Bruno Mars. Like, I'd rather have Adam <laughs> Levine, you know what I'm saying? Right, I, right, like, right, I was, right, I was right. pushing for Adam Levine. Yeah. And they were, you know, they were just like, all right, we're just going to put this cat Bruno on it. And one thing led to another and it ended up being a single, and his first, first single, and took off. And, yeah, but I've been blessed. And then more recent stuff has been uh, Jeremiah Wee. Yeah. That was last last year. And then this year I got um, this new record by this cat, P&B Rock. It's called oh, Selfish. Yeah, Selfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, right. that's in a nutshell, that's my discography. I'm, I'm like, I'm under the radar. I pop up, do a record. Yeah. Go back under the radar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm around. I've been nah. in here for a minute, you know. 
Okay, so I hear, man, you know, I hear Michigan, you know, mm-hmm. Florida, New York, Atlanta. Yeah. Talk to the young cats about, you know, moving from where you're from to, to make a new way. You know what I mean? And why you did what you did. Yeah, I think it's important. Um, just because, I mean, there weren't as many opportunities, you know. Yeah. You almost have to move where the opportunities are. Hell yeah. Um, you know, I went to Florida. I went to FAM just because, well, at the time... The ratio of girls oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Right, right, right. It was one like 20, time. 20, 20 to one or yeah. something crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I went there, and then, but you know, it was cool because, you know, you go to fam. It's, it's still cats from all over. It's a right. DC vibe. It's a Philly vibe. It's a New York vibe. And I just got just be by being a DJ. I was cool with everybody. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. Um, that was cool. But then I felt like I, I needed to be in New York, just around all the movers and shakers. At the time, this is early 2000s. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't be here without, you know, not only meeting those people and doing those records, but just, you know, keeping those relationships because those relationships transform over over oh, yeah. the years. And the, and the cats that you're interning with um, or the cats you're coming up with end up being a and R's ahead of A&R yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. So that, that was probably the biggest thing is just developing and keeping those relationships. Word. You know? Yeah. So, I mean... Listen, what he's telling y'all is like, listen, if you're in a small town, you're in a city that might not have as much music business in your area, sometimes you got to make that big move. You got to yeah. make that big adjustment. And uh, I did it myself, coming from Seattle, coming down to Atlanta, going to school, going to L.A., uh-huh. coming back here. I mean, I understand exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. So I want to switch switch gears, talk about music, you know uh-huh. what I mean, the, the equipment. Okay. Uh, over the years, I followed you for years. You were the first person who I was like, yo, who makes those speakers you know (laughs) right so a lot of what you know like you'll see you know from his from his uh upbringing and equipment i'll be like yo what is that and you know he was doing native instruments videos akai videos i've been following that so talk about you know some of what you're using and and uh what you're what you back then and what you're using now yeah um i've always kind of been like a, a gearhead um you know, my over the years, obviously technology's changed. But I started out on the MP, yeah, out of two thousand. I remember having like they had a little brochure, and I was working at a car dealership. You know, I was just saving money. I had yeah, my brochure yeah. up, <laughs> like I'm gonna get this MP one day. <laughs> it was a two thousand. It wasn't even an XL. Okay, I, um, I had that, and then I saw that a lot of cats were using ASR. Yeah, back that, then that was me. Yeah, uh-huh. oh, you was okay. Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. So then, but. I wanted to have something that was because ASI was it was getting older at the time, so I was looking right. for something new. New, new yeah. so they had this Kurzweil that could play the samples on keys and stuff like that. Right. So basically, I would do all my drums on the uh, NPC and all of like I would take uh, snippets of samples. Yep. Like I'll take one uh, piano note or whatever, and then spread it across the keys. Yeah. So it still has that gritty kind of sound. Okay. It's sample free. Yeah, you know that's how like piggy bang let me in. Oh, yeah. If you listen to a lot yeah. of my early stuff, it's like little single plug. Little plug. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that was how I started, and then um, over the years, I I heard this one record by the Neptunes. Uh, this is an LL Cool J record. I think it was Love You Better, mm-hmm. and Oof. I love the fuck the 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 the, the moog. Yeah, the the, the moog on that joint. Yeah, yo, and yeah. it just changed. I don't know what it was about yeah. that record and at the time, <laughs> something, but it just like changed my life. Like, yo, I gotta find that sound. That something about it was so organic. So right. I just went into this whole big analog thing where I okay. had like, I don't know, man. I was like collecting like I had you know poly sixes, profit yeah. fives. Memory moves. I had everything. I had racks and racks of stuff, and, and then technology kind of really kicked in, and you know it just kind of slimmed back down to just yeah. the keyboard at one point. Yeah, yeah. Um, full circle. I'm back on the MP. They have like a hardware software hybrid Word. that um, just feels comfortable to me, and and it, it makes. I mean, obviously, I've done Logic. I've um, and I track everything in Pro Tools, but yep. it's really the MP, that hybrid thing, and and uh, and and. You know, the other stuff is just basically uh, a lot of stuff for, you know, whoever's vocals recording. And, yeah, yeah, vocals and word, micro word. drums and stuff like that. Now, a lot of these kids are starting out. A lot of them, like, are trying to figure out, you know, what's acceptable or what should I do, what shouldn't I do. Yeah. What are a few things that, you know, you maybe would have told yourself 10, 15 years ago yeah. on what to do and what not to do? Maybe from a creative standpoint and from a business standpoint. Yeah. I, I would say one thing to do is to try to develop your own sound. Yeah. I think that's really, really important. A lot of producers get 
especially nowadays for some reason a lot of cats hear you know this snare and this yeah. sound and just literally just take it just because it's on the radio I mean right I, I just really believe you gotta come from your own heart and cause people can hear through that you, you yeah. can hear yeah. I, I, it's fast I can hear it fast you know I go to a beat battler or something or listen to cats um, stuff I can tell who's influence inf- is yeah. influence mm-hmm. who's copying and who's really really coming from their own heart with it okay. um, definitely do that um, one thing not to do is not to not to really like discredit your peers, yeah. you'll be you'll be surprised on how many of your peers are going to make it. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Or or if maybe not even this field, they may go into video, and you might need them down the road. A lot of times, right. um, you know, we, we go to these conferences, and you know, it's like a hundred people in the crowd, and like five people on stage. But mm-hmm. little do you know, the dude next to you is <laughs> nice on next. keys. <laughs> right, you know exactly. what I'm saying? The dude, the other dude yeah. shoots video, so it's it's really about working with your peers and just teamwork. I, I've learned that late in my career. Yeah, me that, too. Um, me too. Like, yep. collabing with people is really where it is. I mean, um, you know, you know, a hit record is a hit record. You know, just being right. a part, get, having 1% of a record is, you know what I mean? Everything. It, 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 it can everything. change everything. It can change everything. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And you can always say you're a part of it. So, those are some of the, some of the things. I mean, just keep your, just keep your, your circle, your circle tight, but just like, make sure you don't really, um, shit on people. There's been times. Yeah. There's been times where I won't say I. I it's not my personality to like shit on anybody. But there's right. been times where I'm like I get caught up on my. I'm really busy and there be like a songwriter like yo, I'm nice. I'm nice, yo. I'm nice. And I'm like okay, we'll get up. You know what I mean? Yep. Not even on no like industry shit. Nah, I'm really just, not just busy with life. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? But that person ends up being Stacy Barth, Ooh. who's nice. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nice. Or yeah. Um, like I'll meet a cat and get real cool with, um, I met people like online that I ended up getting real cool with and ends up being B major. Then yeah. Yeah. That donut. I met donut yeah. on Craigslist selling them an MP and you know what I'm saying? It's just exactly. really random. You just yeah. don't really, you don't, you don't know where your next blessing is going to come from or who, who's going to help you get there. So just, just, you know, keep, keep your karma intact. And, there you go. Yep. Yeah. Well, listen, you're hearing tips. From brothers who got plaques around the walls, been able to be in this game for, you know, over a decade and some yeah. change. Yeah. And um, I'm telling y'all, like I tell myself, it's an everyday thing, you know. And, and people don't realize that if you want to make a career out of this, yeah. you got to understand that there's going to be, there's peaks and there's going to be those valleys. Absolutely. So how do you, how have you managed balancing like that as well as your family life and all of that in yeah. this industry yeah it's uh, you know that's probably one of the harder things you yeah. know early on because i mean i've definitely gone from having paper to not having any paper yep like i've gone from having a lot of paper to damn near being homeless yeah to getting my you know being financially straight yep but still knowing that this is still not gonna you know uh, gonna last be- forever yeah. you know what i mean so i've found ways to diversify i've made like really smart moves with like real estate yeah um that's been like every house i've you know we always buy in the right area we do yeah. a lot of research every house we've always flipped at least 50 60 grand out of it into yeah. the next house and, and like stuff like that um has been good you know you know buying and not renting sometimes um also um you know i do other stuff like i consult for um an ad agency uh BDO. yeah yeah um and I have other interests too. Like I really, I'm really into interior, you know, design, yeah, you yeah. know, and building houses. I mean, that that is looking like I'm about to do a, a few more just <laughs> just because I'm getting the bug. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, just exactly. Just flipping stuff. So right. Um. So that's that's how you know it's it's not easy. Sometimes, honestly, sometimes you just gotta go through it. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't want I don't wish anyone to go through <laughs> it, but sometimes you, you know you have no clue. You have no clue. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I I remember. Especially early on, I had um my first couple of checks. I did something for a Rough Rider or something like that. Man. Yeah, I had my little apartment in Harlem. I went and bought me a nice big twenty seven inch TV at uh-huh. the time. Yeah, <laughs> I thought yeah. I, was balling. I had a Super Bowl <laughs> party. You know, what I'm saying I was balling. Right. And then like a couple of months later, like I had no money to catch the train in New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and just those lessons, just you know, just tell me to keep stuff. And then I got a lot of stuff invested as well. So, right. but as far as the family. I always try to make sure my kids, 
you know, know I'm there. I'm always present. Yeah. You know, I'm always taking them everywhere. I'm always in, you know, basket, basketball, swimming. Yeah. I'm boxing with my son. Like, I, oh, yeah. just making sure your kids, that you're in your kids' life is just really important. And Off top. Um, my wife, I feel like she's definitely sacrificed, um, you know, not having me around all the time. Yeah. But it's really for the for the best of everybody like we, yeah. you know so it's, it's just it's it's a tough and I, and I get that a lot by a lot of young cats who haven't made it to that point. whole relationship yeah. uh-huh. um that, you know because there was years where she held she held she the whole family down, down yeah. you know what i'm saying and, you <laughs> I know, know exactly you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's just like that that's what the marriage is about she exactly. holds it down sometimes sometimes you know yep. so um just know that it could be difficult but communicating it's, with your spouse is everything. And is everything definitely word. yeah word yeah well man Facts, facts, facts. We're we're <laughs> right. talking facts around here, right. and uh, you know I appreciate you for allowing me to you know come through and yeah. check it out. Tell them yeah. a, a little bit where they can find you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I'm on uh, Twitter. Whoa, I started out with Twitter, which is like it's, it's all right. a lot of people it's still on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, a lot of people still on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can find me on I'm on, uh, at Needles on Twitter at Needles nineteen oh six. That's my Instagram. Yeah, I'll put and it down. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, those are, you know, those are really the main, the main, main spots. Um, look out for a couple of new artists or you know, a few artists that I'm working with. You'll see more if you just follow me on Instagram. You'll see more of that and more of what what I'm into and 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 um, and what I got coming next. So uh, appreciate Boom. the follow. Yeah. Well, you heard it there. Follow my man Needles. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us again. Yes, appreciate you, G. All right, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hope you got something out of that. My mission is to bring balanced content. You know, whether it's motivational, whether it's tips, tricks, do's, don'ts, reviews. Just trying to hang out with y'all for a little bit and give you a little piece of what I go through, what I do. And that's what it's all about, man. Spreading the love, giving back. It's your boy, Henny. If you like this, you know it. If you don't, it's what else. But I'm going to be back next Friday like it wasn't nothing. Hit him up!